Khadija El Otmani. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Yeah. Khadija, I'm going to introduce you. So Khadija is one of the best real estate brokers in the United Arab Emirates. She hasn't paid me to say this, by the way. <laughs> she has just over 18,000 followers on Instagram, and her clients are predominantly footballers, celebrities, and the overall rich and famous. She is not your usual agent, which I say in quotation marks, and you will find out why as the podcast goes on. I say in quotation marks because... I'm not the usual agent, is like thrown around the... Let me start again. I don't like it. It's too blabbery. Uh, yes, so, uh, so uh, I'd rather to say about the clients are athletes, famous. Athletes? Yes, because... Because they're not just footballers. No. There is Olympic uh, guys, so I, athletes. And there is a lot of businessmen, actually. So that it's very interesting is the mixed, you know, like athletes, athletes, singers. Got it. And business people. La, 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 la. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Khadija El Otmani, welcome. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. I'm going to introduce... No, let me start again. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 to no, 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 don't. Editing this. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Make it the best. Like, we are here to make yeah, it the best. exactly. Okay. Khadija El Otmani is one of the best real estate brokers in the United Arab Emirates not just Dubai. She has over 18,000 followers on Instagram. Her clients are predominantly athletes, tycoons, singers, celebrities, and the overall rich and famous. She is not your average agent, which I say uh, in quotation marks because it gets thrown around the place a lot. But you will find out why as the podcast goes on, because she really is not. She even refuses to sell property to end users. Well, how on earth is she an agent if she doesn't sell properties to people who live in it, Alex? I hear you ask. Listen to the coming conversation and you will find out how she's getting by without this. Khadija is also a partner at Driven Properties LLC in Dubai, which means she has a share in the profits. The commission she makes is not her only source of income, which is something else we'll also touch upon, and a goal of many of the listeners, I am sure. On this episode, I'm going to do my best to take a deep dive into the psyche of Khadija and find out how she got to where she is and how she's pulling off what she's pulling off and to see what lessons we can all learn from her and implement into our own work. If you're driving, stop driving, pull over, <laughs> Get your notepad and pen out, ready to take notes. Khadija, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I know you're busy, even though you were one hour late. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right. I'm going to say it outright. I'm going to just jump straight into this. Mm. How much did you make for the company last year? Um... Say it. No, I don't want to say it. <laughs> you can. No. This is a safe environment. No, it's no. a very private podcast. No, it's not a private podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's only going on Instagram and YouTube and okay, Snapchat, still, Facebook. Still, I don't want to be kidnapped. No. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. Um, okay. We all know in the, that uh, our, um, our earning is uh, kind of uh, public, like let's say in the company. Um, because we have a CRM with, um, to keep track of uh, our deals. Mm -hmm. So let's say I was the top earner for uh, 2023. Can I say it? I'm yeah, going to say it. 31, sorry, we can edit that. Yeah, yeah. What was it again? Can I say it? Yes. That's your, it's your world, not mine. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Can I, yeah. Oh, but what is, it? what is the actual figure? I forgot the currency. Ah, uh, the, the, the pounds, yeah. seven million pounds. Six. So it's six point seven. Six point seven. Okay. But uh, it's, uh, it's just say uh, we don't need that they have my exact because with bonuses and et cetera, you, you make it seven million and which is true actually. Okay. Can I say it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that? So again, okay, so we'll cut back into this bit. Can I say it? We're in a democracy. <laughs> okay. Khadija built 
£6.7 million sterling last year. Just shy of £7 million. In fact, with bonuses, because she has a share in the profits as well, in addition to commission, you would have earned around £7 million or probably in excess of. I don't know about the intricacies, but that is fucking amazing. Because in the UK, the broker, they don't earn that. <laughs> Sorry, I just spat all over the microphone. <laughs> no, nowhere near. I think maybe even the, 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 the best agency in London, yeah. central London, I won't say any names because yeah. it might be subjective. I'm just guessing who mm. I think is the best. I don't think the owner of that business even earns that yeah, much money. There is something very important. Though. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not the top earner of Dubai or the yeah, I know. we know that there is people who are making double of that you're being humble but no, yes no, no, there is a, a lot of it's not it's not an incredible thing to do because once once you check uh, what other to try to position yourself you discover actually that uh, there is and especially women so some women are earning double of that yeah I don't blame them I think women, women are better power. agents than men yeah me too <laughs> You're more organized. You can multitask. You can do many things at once. Yeah. You're better at selling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been <Keep> like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is not this a podcast. Is this is just me <laughs> just like pumping me, your head me, full of gas. Yeah. <laughs> um, Next question, I know, I know, I know you're not. I want to just clarify that point. Mm. Okay, let's just be clear. Yeah. I know you're not the best agent. Well, no, that's no, a subjective uh, thing. I, think I know you're not the, earning mm. the most in Dubai, yeah. I should rephrase. Mm. However, on a global perspective, that is amazing. Like yeah. to be doing those figures. And especially from for me, coming from London or the UK as a whole, mm. I don't think anyone as an estate agent makes that much money after tax. After tax, yeah. If you do, please email me. Yeah. A.E. at alexavagora.com. Please email me because I want to speak to you. Mm. Okay? Let's leave that there. Okay. Now you have background. <laughs> Cut that. Yes. Now you have background on Khadija uh, and you can understand why I brought her into this room. Okay. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. I want to find out how you got to where you are. Because I want to get there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I want to get to that, mm. that stage. I'm not there. No way near. And I want to get there. So let's go all the way to the beginning. Did you grow up thinking, I want to sell property? No, no, not at all. <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was not um, a vocation or something that I was thinking, I'm going to do a real estate. Is uh, I've, I've seen people like 10 years ago doing real estate and getting into brokerage. And I, and I noticed that it's kind of changed their life. And at this time, um, I was looking um, to um, to uh, to uh, uh, I was looking for a, a furnished apartment, and um, I struggled a little bit to find um, the the kind of apartment with the the the, the type of uh, furniture that um, uh, uh, like uh, the style that I like. I liked for, to uh, let's redo that. I was struggling to uh, find an apartment with uh, nice furniture or some furniture was more my style. So I uh, figured that I said, you know what, uh, probably uh, there is something to do uh, there on furnished apartment. So I get into uh, furnished apartment business and uh, holiday home business. And this is how I uh, met uh, the chairman of Driven Properties, uh, Abdullah Jaji. Mm -hmm. And this is how I joined Driven Properties. So... Um, I started my career doing um, uh, holiday home rentals. And with, with Driven. With Driven. Yeah. And that gave me a solid base to after do brokerage because um, it was automatic for me when I see a property, I could tell you if you purchase this property at this price um, and I could tell you uh, um, uh, what would be the yield Yield, mm. uh, in uh, long term and in short term. I see. So once I had all this knowledge in the market and mm -hmm. uh, for years spending in holiday home and calculating yield and and uh, working in certain building and area, so that really gave me a solid base. So at some point I was ready to move to brokerage and to sell properties. Okay, so start 
in holiday homes. Got it. Okay, tip number one. <laughs> I'm joking. No. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, because after that, uh, I was really working hard uh, because when I start to sell properties, I start to see my colleagues um, who are, some of them are like big achievers. So, and I was like, how is it doing that? I want to do the same because how they earn that amount, mm. you know, like yeah. I, I, I want to earn the same. What were they earning? Uh, Roughly. In the, in the, like in the beginning, they were making some like around four or five million dirhams. In the, like many years ago, we were kind of all beginners, to be honest. <clears throat> what was, this in, uh, was this in like 2015, 16? Yeah, at 2014. Actually. 2014? Yes. Ah, okay. They were kind of... That's we the were, year I started. Yeah, we were kind of all beginners, you know. So, but however, it was extraordinary, you know. So I wanted to know, and I talked with them, I asked them questions. And they were selling big properties. So they had uh, already connection with uh, clients who uh, have this type of, uh, the, 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 this type of uh, wallet. But actually, uh, so I said, okay, easy. You know, I just need uh, to look for someone who have this kind of money. But actually, I don't. I didn't know anyone who have even more than one million uh, euro or pounds or uh, two million, four, five million dirham. So it was very difficult. What were they doing though? Were they were these buyers, these clients? Uh, in London, we call them buyers. And in Dubai, you call them clients. Yeah. The client is the buyer here. Yeah. Um, so were these people buying many small properties from your colleagues or because in London I'm selling big ticket houses to end users. Mm. Um, so I'm looking for billionaires or hectomillionaires who are going to spend 10 million pounds sterling on mm. a house in Mayfair, which they're going to live in or in Belgravia or in Chelsea yeah. or in Knightsbridge. So were you looking for, um, ultra high net worth individuals to sell houses to to then live in? Or were your colleagues selling many small investments to one person? At the time, I think they were, uh, I don't remember precisely, but precisely, but I believe that they were selling um, like houses like for end users because okay. spending a certain amount on uh, investment, it was not, it was a bit uh, early at the time and we were kind of all trying to just make it and try to understand the market. So it was as n it was not like today where we are we, are, we put in place huge strategies with timelines and to achieve certain number and certain performances. So at the time we were just uh, trying to service a, a buyer, a client. So there was there, there were no real proper strategy. We were not there yet. So, um, Got you. so that's, uh, I, I, I kept looking in the market Fine. and asking question, uh, questions to, uh, brokers and how they make it and how, and I'm like, the, the, the terrible thing is I don't, I, I realized that my entourage were very average. So they could not afford certain things. So I could not even you know, like uh, ask someone to connect me with wealthy people to sell them properties. And at the time, uh, also, uh, Dubai had not they had a very difficult uh, reputation where uh, it, it was very uh, difficult to convince uh, buyers to, uh, uh, to, to purchase a property with really? more than one million uh, pounds. Yeah, yeah, it was. Is that because of 2008? Yeah, exactly. Mm. So it was quite difficult, challenging, but... I uh, um, I sat uh, sat I sat down and I said like okay I sat at my desk and I said okay, well, how I can earn that amount of money that I uh, that I want to achieve. So I was like okay, okay I need property, I need properties and advertise these properties and I will sell these properties. I was like okay, where I can find the properties. Uh, I don't know anyone who, uh, who own a penthouse or own a villa, etc. So I said, okay, start to call the database and cold calling. And so I had the property, but still no buyer. So I said, okay, it doesn't work for me. 
Was it online? Was it on the internet? Yes. Okay, and no one was calling about it? No, no one. Or, uh, and the, the seller will be working with uh, so, many, uh, uh, so many brokers. So it was really challenging. I said, okay, that's not working for me. So I said, so uh, this option is not, uh, it's not working for me, so I need to find another one. So, okay, I need buyers then. And it's like people who buy, okay, I'll look at my scroll in my contact. Uh, this person, this person, this person. I was like, okay, but okay, there is one or two, but what, uh, where, like, how, how they gonna trust me starting in real estate uh, to purchase this big ticket property? I was like, okay, doesn't work. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do? Then I said, you know what? I made a, a few year plan, and I said, okay. How many years? Uh, it was a three-year plan. Okay. So I said, you know what? If I cannot have uh, the property and the seller who is trusting me and being exclusive to me and to, 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 as, an, as a broker, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to create, I'm going to convince someone uh, to, uh, to create that type of property and that type of wealth and then have my own, you know, like, very rare property uh, and do it, uh, like I'll build it. So I start to contact some, some, uh, some potential uh, buyer and I start to talk a lot. Um, I worked uh, a lot with introducers. So the top introducers for me are lawyers, uh, wealth managers, bankers. Uh, those are the, the one who had the best network. So I said, oh, it's okay. Even if I give up 50% of my commission, it's fine. I need to create kind of a base. So this uh, type of introducer, they, uh, they did bring me uh, some potential client. So when you say you, you were fine giving up 50% of your commission, were you incentivizing them and offering them half of your commission? Because I need to convince them I didn't achieve anything. We are at the, be we are at the beginning. And I spent several years in holiday homes. So mm. I was known as the holiday home person. So, so now you're trying to sell. So it was very difficult, you know, to. So I was ready to give up 50% uh, uh, of my commission. I didn't really care because I said I understood that I, to build, uh, to, to, to build uh, a certain uh, uh, network and uh, ecosystem, you have to give. And, and then you will be ready to receive, you know? So you cannot just like, you, you want everything. You want the best client, you want the big property, you want the money, you want the commission, you want, no. So I was ready, I said, okay. So it's certain sacrifice that you have to, to do to uh, reach certain level. So I agree with all these people, uh, with this, uh, this institution, they brought me the client and then I had, it was my turn to convince this, uh, that I was the, 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 the right uh, partner for these uh, investors to, uh, to, uh, to do real estate in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I, uh, uh, then after uh, I had to go all in with uh, these people. So I, I, I'll say, I'll give anything for you to trust me into investing in, that, in this property. And trust me, if you invest in this property, I was giving cer certain... Uh, uh, targets into uh, performances and earning for uh, the, the, the client buyer. What do you mean by that? How? how? At the time, I, st I was telling them, if you purchase this property, yeah. I guarantee, okay, I guarantee uh, verbally, I don't have anything else. So I guarantee you will make that amount uh, of money. And if you did? At this time, I'm not there yet. Right, okay. I'm so, jumping. Yes. Sorry, okay. So uh, I was convinced about certain uh, properties that they can earn in the future off plan, for example. I was uh, convinced that they can achieve a certain amount uh, or certain performances, like uh, two, three X uh, at the time. The most difficult was to convince uh, the buyer. So the buyer at the time... I believe that 90% of the, the, the time when they 
purchase what I advise them with my plan of investment plan. I'm convinced that they didn't invest in the property. I am, and, and some have told me since then that they invested in me. They said, okay, um, I think this person is so, so, uh, you know, passionate and so uh, dedicated to her job. It's, uh, I'm gonna trust her and believe in her and then let's see. This would be my mistake if I, I was wrong. So I was really giving everything. And uh, at this time, I started with small properties and we invested on that properties. So the plan is like two to three years, flip the property after that. And slowly, slowly, uh, we built so much wealth for, our, uh, for, for our, my clients that Amazing. at this time, I actually created uh, my base, uh, my client base, where today they can afford and go and purchase uh, 20 million or 30 million pounds. And they are exclusive me, these 20 to 30 million pounds uh, uh, have been exclusively created by my strategy put in place a few years before. Amazing. So, for example, I'm going to say it in Durham, for example, one of my clients invested with me and after two years I arrived, he invested 10 million dirhams. I don't know, it's but, uh, uh, around almost uh, 3 million euros. Yeah, 2 to 3 million sterling euros. Yes. Yeah. And we turn it into 123 million dirham. What? Yes. So this... 123 million dirhams. To end from 10 to something like that, yeah. In uh, two years and a half. Holy shit. Yes. And I, I, at the time, I promised... Uh, um, 2x. So, wow. They must love you. Uh, yeah, of course. They, <laughs> they, uh, but, you know, it's, they are, uh, it's very satisfying that uh, at, at some point that you can feel that this person have trusted you and, and invested their money on you. So you feel that you are, in, you, are you know, like uh, they are... Uh, gave you probably uh, a lot, a big part of their uh, savings, life savings sometime. Mm -hmm. So you become, you become like, uh, you know, you're on a mission. So the hustling is super, super hard. So to, uh, to recap, I said, okay, I don't have the property to get this type of client. I don't have the client who can buy this type of properties, the billionaire, the super rich, etc. Okay, no problem. I'm going to create uh, that. And the, my only way is to have a track record and to say, okay, so I just need to find this couple of people who are going to believe on my plan on, yeah. on certain investments. Once I have this, I can show a track record. And today, I'm exclusively relying on my track record. And this is why I don't sell certain property and I'm extremely focused and I stopped doing end user, uh, okay. servicing the end users. So, so instead you do? Investment. Okay. So with plans and strategies so that we, we, we put very strict rules and of investment, in real estate investment, and we follow that, that rules and based on our experience in the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how I work right is now. Is it true that if one of your clients, even if they're a famous footballer earning millions, a year and they're looking for a house to live in, you say to them, sorry, I can't help you. And you don't even refer them to another agent. True or false? Uh, it's uh, true, but this is not the way I do it. So I tell them from the beginning, this is not something that I'm, that my, it's not something that I enjoy doing mm -hmm. and it's extremely stressful. It's easier to do investment than to find the house for a client. So because there is so many uh, the parameters uh, into uh, so you have uh, you have to please uh, the couple so mm -hmm. the kids the the view the the space in the room so it's a lot of work actually and it, a lot uh, spend uh, it's time consuming and the earning is not as uh, uh, as good as when you do investment because <coughs> sorry when you do investment you earn twice you earn when you sell the property uh, no, you're, sorry, you earn three times. So 
the first time you earn, so you sell the property to the client, then you resell, so you're going to earn. And if you achieve, you pay on performances. So, of course, there's, it has to be agreed initially with your investors. And um, when you sell a property for end users, they uh, will enjoy this, proper, this property probably 10, 20 years, etc. Mm. But they also do investment. I, I, I don't say that you should stop servicing any end users. But for example, <coughs> if you're good at mm -hmm. putting place strategies, you're good at uh, doing investment, you have to focus at 200%, 2,000% on what you best uh, uh, doing. So uh, I don't tell them like, okay, uh, go. I refer them to, uh, to certain agents, but sometimes it's very difficult to, to, to have because if they want in certain uh, area, but I do refer to my client, to my, uh, sorry, to my colleagues. I refer my client to my colleagues when they do. Uh, I don't that's think what you've I'm ever doing. referred me anyone. Okay, you just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just teasing. Mm. I just want to recap just to make sure I got this clear. Yeah. Because that was a very long answer. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, this, is, this is exactly what I want because you've given away golden nuggets within the conversation. Mm. So you start, you, you met just by chance or by God or by some sort of higher power, you met Abdullah, Allah yes. Jaji. Yes. The owner of Driven Properties LLC. Yes, yes, yes. The founder, the CEO, who, by the way, is an amazing human being. Yeah. Um, And I'd love to get to know him even more, but we'll get to that another day. So you went on a viewing. You were uh, looking no. for a property for yourself? No, no, no. I no, misunderstood. No. Where did you meet him? No, no. Uh, I told uh, a friend that I uh, gonna work and probably uh, create my uh, own uh, holiday home uh, company. Aha. Uh -huh. And okay. she told me, for, uh, forget about that. I want to introduce you to my boss. Okay. And so I'm, she worked at Driven? Yes. She was working at Driven uh, and she said, I'm, I want to introduce you to my boss. And I was like, mm, no. where is he from? Saudi. I'm like, mm, mm. <laughs> not sure about that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then that's what happened. We, I got, uh, I, she insisted and I, and I went there. Okay. And then you started in holiday homes. Yeah. You worked very hard. Mm. You learned the holiday home business very well. And then you were inspired by your colleagues who were making four or five million dirham. Yes. Per annum, yes, which is about one million pounds sterling. Yes, by the way, which is a lot of money. Uh, and uh, they were beginner also. So and they were beginning. It's also. not someone oh when 2014-15 they were This doing. Uh, yeah, they were beginner. And by the way, in Dubai, you can anywhere between you can earn anywhere between 50% percent to maybe 70 and in some brokerages even 90% yeah. of whatever you bill, whatever you make the company. So that's amazing. Like some, you have to work hard as a lawyer to earn that sort yeah. of money in the UK. Anyway. So you were inspired by them. You picked their brain. You asked them. You sat them down and asked them, how are you doing this? <clears throat> Trying to learn from them. Yeah. And then you implemented the same. You incentivized industry professionals, mortgage brokers, yeah. lawyers, I didn't wealth managers. I didn't impl implement the same because they, uh, uh, um, I didn't had what they had. So a network. And I was known not an, as a broker. I was known as a person doing... You, You came from nothing in the property industry. Yeah, you had no it. clients who had that sort of wealth to go and yeah. buy the properties that they were selling. So you came from nothing. Okay, fact, in, in this industry, you came from nothing, mm. zero, ground zero. Holiday homes is not ground zero, but you came from nothing because you yeah. didn't start with connections. No, the problem was, uh, for me, at the beginning, was the connection. The yeah, connections. that's everyone's problem, by the way, in the industry yeah, yes, at yes, the beginning. Yes. How do you get the clients? Yes. That's it. So you, you figured out a way to go get those clients. Mm. You sat them down in the office. Yeah. I remember as well, you said to me outside of the podcast that you didn't go for dinners. You didn't no. go outside of the office no. because you're a woman. Yeah. You wanted them. No, you said, no, this is a business. You're going to come to the office and see me. Yeah. So, uh, so there is a different reason uh, that, uh, number one, I wanted them to come to the office to see that we are a proper organization. And behind me, there was a full ecosystem around the investors. Mm. So this is important that they see I'm not just uh, some random broker uh, walking around, etc. So it was very important that they see that I'm, super, uh, I'm part of an organization. So that's uh, uh, one point. Can you just go into that? Sorry, I know I keep cutting you off, yeah. but I really want them to understand everything. When you say ecosystem, 
and you brought people to the office to understand the ecosystem and build trust to see where you live, etc. Because mm. really, you do live there. Um, what does Driven do? What is this ecosystem? So the uh, Driven property have uh, over the year understood that the, the the in the brokerage business you need to service at the maximum your your uh, clients. So they have created over the year any uh, any businesses around the real estate. So uh, from uh, and uh, so the city citizen uh, investment by citizenship um, uh, the. Interior design, development, uh, fund, multifamily offices, you know, like anything that can uh, uh, service. So if you come, it's one stop shop. Okay. So that's why. That's the ecosystem. Yeah, that's the ecosystem. And that's why we have everything to service. Got it. And okay. Whatever you need, you don't need to go another company. Yeah. So that was. Uh, that's that why you brought them to the office. Show off the ecosystem. Exactly, and that I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. Uh, I'm part of an organization. Yeah. That was very important. Also, I don't do. Um, I was not doing dinner. Not. Alors, it is uh, a very. Uh, it's not easy to uh, draw a line also between the professional, uh, professional, and uh, the personal. Um, space. So um, also uh, I'm a mother, uh, so I have a child, so I have to be uh, also uh, in, in Dubai and when you're a broker, not only in Dubai, but it's a seven day a week uh, job. Um, we live here, our, most of our clients is in, are in Europe, there is three to four hour uh, time difference at the moment. So you get called until 11. Uh, PM, so yep. it is very <laughs> difficult. So you you need at some point to put a red line where you can protect uh, your personal life. And I try to don't do dinner and to don't I don't need to do business over uh, dinner. Okay, you know, so it can be done at the office during working hours. Of course, I go dinner to celebrate with the client once we did achieve. Uh, some crazy uh, uh, numbers uh, we celebrate, and over the year now, uh, some of uh, the clients I work with uh, seven, eight years, so they are clo as close as very good friends or family members. So, amazing. But it's also where I want to be seen as a reliable person, as a serious broker, and not a party girl or uh, uh, or uh, someone who who is trying to to blur the line between the personal and the professional. So that's why I'm kind of strict with myself uh, and my clients respect that. And it's amazing because we we have a lot of respect for each other. Okay. Um, I heard you say you're a mother as well, mm. which is amazing. You have two jobs. Mm. How do you find that? Look, we are extremely lucky uh, here in Dubai. We have a support system. Um, we, we can have uh, nannies, driver, etc. Um, so it's actually, and I have a, a tremendous respect for women in Europe. Like I, I can see my sisters who have uh, three kids and wake up early, dress the three of them, breakfast, clean up, drop them. So go to work. Yeah, go to work, pick them up, etc. So. Here in Dubai, uh, at some point, we can organize our life and to make sure that the support system team that we can put in place is there to uh, make sure that get out of the way all the, 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 the task uh, that can, um, can, uh, uh, can be avoided. For example, uh, cleaning and uh, the groceries uh, and the pickup and the drop off can be done uh, by um, the, the the team yep. that I put in place. So once I come home, and there is this time I spend with my husband and my son, uh, where it's hundred percent, hundred percent, sorry, quality time, because I don't have to stress about uh, me, me or my husband. Uh, that's not uh, my husband is someone who is very uh, helpful, but we uh, spend that time exclusively in. Our family. So when you're with your family, you're with your family. Exactly. When you're at work, yes. you're at work. I don't have any other uh, uh, thing to worry about, which is why 
uh, working in that uh, country is really, really amazing for women. Good. Okay. Um, speaking of women, since mm -hmm. we're on the topic, mm -hmm. what's it like being a woman in the real estate interest, the, the real estate industry in Dubai? Uh, the real estate, uh, I think it's uh, it's it's getting easier. Uh, it it's been easy. Or oh, we there 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 been a lot of things put in place to um, uh, to uh, help women to be entrepreneurs. So it's quite uh, an amazing market to be in. Uh, of course, there will be always uh, certain uh, exceptions where um, we have some um, misogyny. Mm -hmm. uh, comments. Um, how did she get that client? And do you some, think that's misogynistic? Yes. How did she get that client? Yes. Or uh, just because she's a woman, she get it, and or she can act like this because she's a woman. I see. Okay. Uh, so she can act basically like a diva or crazy because she's a woman. So uh, that will be there and always be there in any uh, actually industry. Uh, it's not. It's just jealousy, by the way. It mm -hmm. comes from a place of jealousy. As no one that's doing better than you will ever say something like those three things you just said. Mm. How did she get that client? Oh, it's just because she's a woman. She can act crazy. Oh, it's just because a woman that she got that client. Mm. If someone's doing better than you, like if you spoke to Jeff Bezos, he wouldn't say that to you. Yeah. Uh, so it's, only, it's pure right. jealousy. You're probably right. But probably. Uh, you know, it's a very good market. It's exciting. And I think. Uh, I think uh, at first time it's better to be a woman. Although sometimes 100%. I percent. By the so way, the best agents are women. Yeah, yeah. Even in France, I think it's the same. And in London. And in London also. Yeah, I think uh, here it's you and Honey Deliami, right? Yeah, I I think there is other women out there who are quite in, in Dubai who are quite amazing. I heard about. Yeah. So and again, I have just uh, not achieved. Uh, there is some bigger achiever here and, and they deserve to be known and put in the light. So it's nice to feel that, you know, all this work have paid by, paid, uh, paid off. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that uh, sometimes to be recognized by your peer, it's a very good feeling. And to get, you win some uh, res respect and it helps you to uh, work because I work a lot with other brokers, especially outside of the company. So uh, collaboration is very important uh, to me. Why is my? Because you're answering my questions. I shouldn't. I shouldn't share questions in the future. Yeah. Okay. I know Are I you collaborative, Kazija? I am collaborative. Oh, wow, what a coincidence! I was <laughs> no, going to no, ask I you am, that. Okay. No, I am extremely collaborative. Um, I believe that is extremely important to uh, uh, to work with uh, to work as a team because. In the, especially in the investment side, um, I think um, the piece of the cake is so so big that you can actually there is enough to uh, to feed everybody or to earn enough uh, with your colleague. And I I was playing um, basketball uh, for uh, 20, 20 years, so I was someone Shock. who is a team player. Huh? How tall are you? Uh, I'm one seventy six. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's tall. It's a it's a it's a mindset. Yeah. So I have uh, the team mindset. So I I'm easily uh, working wherever. I like to uh, to meet new people. Okay. I like uh, to uh, also learn from other people from other uh, people or other colleagues, and you learn a lot. So for example, that's why I go to the office often. You do uh, every day. Well, not Saturday, Sunday, but. You too. Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm do, an office I don't person. Do, I don't do the weekend. You do. The, apparently, I heard you do the weekend. Abdullah. From who? Abdullah. How does he know? He, apparently, you come on Saturday. You ah, know. yeah, I saw him. He caught me smoking though. Does he like smokers? I mean, you're you a smoker. Smoke I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a liar. I am a perfect person. <laughs> Mama, don't believe him. <laughs> don't, be, don't believe him. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, you walked out uh, the office on a Saturday, like yes, but, five uh, p.m. And just for you to know, there is camera in the office, and sometimes they check the camera. I didn't smoke in the office. So where are you? Where are you Abdullah, if you're watching this, I did not smoke in the <laughs> office. <Sucker. laughs> I was in the car park. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh. There, I know there's cameras. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, he doesn't watch the cameras, does he? Everybody watches the cameras. No I'm way. Not, maybe I should not. I didn't say that. Someone else, HR, told Alex that he watched the camera. I just repeat that. 
No, no. <coughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, but go, going back to collaborativeness, uh, let me just um, add to that. Like, I uh, have been working with Khadija now for, well, when I say with, we don't actually, I'm not meant to work that closely with Khadija. I'm just another broker in the business, and so is she. And why are you looking at me like no, that? No, no, I try to understand your question. I joined in November. It's not really a question, it's just a statement. I joined in November and um, she's taken me under her wing. Like when she saw me, she just oh, fell in love with me. So like love at first sight. <laughs> uh, I know she's married, it's awful. And, <laughs> and uh, she's could, just taking... I can be your sugar mommy if you want. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> That'll be amazing. I won't have to work anymore. Um... She just took me under her wing. So she's incredibly collaborative. And that was one of my questions. Uh, annoyingly, I shared it with her and she got onto the topic before I did. But uh, it's, I think it's a very important in this yeah. industry to be collaborative, right? Yeah. Like you have to be, otherwise I think you sink. Mm. I know there's agents in our business who don't work with other agents. I've never heard of this before. I hear them getting calls from other agents saying, uh, yes. I've got a buyer for your property. Yeah. Sorry, I don't work with other agents. Click. So... What do you I, think about that? Uh, look, when uh, w uh, I don't think it's right, okay? Uh, for me, for example, uh, uh, yesterday I got a phone call. I'm selling a property in, uh, in uh, the address, mm -hmm. an investment uh, 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 of, uh, for one of my clients. And uh, the other broker from another brokerage told me, okay, uh, uh, 9 million is the offer. Uh, but are you covered on mm. uh, on the on the, on this price? And I said no. Uh, I said no, but it's okay. You can keep the buyer commission. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, but I don't un like. He's um, so he's like. But he was perplexed by that. Yes, you well, stumped him. Uh, yeah, like uh, how do you? Uh, I don't believe that broker do charity. I said. I, uh, just just to, for the listeners, if you say covered in Dubai, that means you're getting fees from your client. Yeah. So if the broker's asking Khadija, are you covered? That means, are you getting paid by your seller? Yes. And she said, no, but you can keep the commission from your buyer anyway. Yes. Which is weird, by the way. Like, yeah. It's not weird. I have a, so let, let's not. We're saying I'll do the deal for free. I, I won't mean, make any money. I, yeah, it's for, but it's not completely for free because my main uh, purpose, it was to uh, sell my uh, uh, property, okay, so I sold it to the, that client and I said, okay, I'm going to achieve, our target is to achieve that number. I see. Okay? okay. So no matter what, even if I don't make money, I need to achieve this target. Mm. I don't care about making 2% of 9 million dirham. I have a bigger picture in mind. So I'm going to sell that property. You can keep that uh, 2% mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and anyway, I'm going to take that money, I'm going to reinvest again. So I'm going to make money later. So mm -hmm. I'm not here to try to, to you know, to, um, to earn every, uh, every penny on each property. I have a bigger picture in mind with the priority. It's the seller achievement. And that I keep my word and I keep my target on track. And if it implement that I'm not making money in the deal, I don't care. That's the game. I know I'm going to make money there. So for uh, another broker, it's quite difficult to understand that. So mm -hmm. I tell him, I swear I'm not <laughs> getting anything. I can give you the seller number and you can ask him. That's not uh, a big deal for me. And I, I, tell him, I, tell, I tell him, actually, I'm going to make money later because I'm going to use that money to reinvest it. I was like, oh, I see, I see, I see. But it's still a bit uh, careful. Okay. You're like, yeah, maybe she's lying. <laughs> um, it's very unusual. It's very unusual. But anyway, we, un we understand yeah. why. You think very long term. It's good. Yeah. Uh, Khadija, a lot of successful people that I know, mm -hmm. I think pretty much like n maybe 99% of them have... And I'm talking about like really successful, mm. like your level, who are earning millions a year, um, have experienced some level of trauma in their life. Have you gone through s like anything like that? <laughs> yeah. Or has anyone like caused you yes. 
heartache or yeah, done yeah. something to you to get to where you are, to give the anger and the frustration. Oh, yes, and they still every day, actually. Okay, so my biggest... Um, I believe that where I am today... Is <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm rich. No worries. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> oh my god no. you crack me up <laughs> no but uh, it, it's uh, I don't thankfully and I'm extremely grateful for that I, I had uh, of, of course I want for the trauma I, you're grateful for the trauma no no I'm extremely grateful to have uh, not had something who like uh, uh, that that will require to see someone or to be like but uh, I had a normal life, uh, you know, like grew up uh, normally, small village, uh, very, very nice uh, uh, childhood. But I wanted to um, come out of my social condition. You know, I wanted to, uh, to, um, I wanted to raise socially. Okay. You know, I wanted to do it for me, for my family. You know, I want to, br to break a circle that you know, like we have uh, in the family. And uh, actually, my other sisters and brothers actually do it well. I have a brother who is a surgeon. So from a, my mother was not uh, uh, reading or writing, you know. So it was, you kind of always, uh, when you raised in that type of environment, you always want to overcome something. So you kind of grow up with this uh, in you. So there is not serious trauma, right? But in business, I have a crazy trauma. <laughs> yeah. So um, the person who kind of taught me a little bit real estate before, uh, so today we can say that Abdullah is a mentor. I don't like to say it, Abdullah, but you're welcome. <laughs> um, Why don't you like saying that? Why I don't like what? Saying that he's a mentor. Because he's, uh, everybody uh, always tell him that he's so talented and amazing. He is a talented. He doesn't go to his head though, does it? He's very humble. No, he's very um, humble. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, he's very humble. But that's not my persona. <laughs> that I have a persona for every person in the company. So oh, I have a persona okay. for you, a persona yeah. for Abdullah. So, Sugar mummy for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I have a, I've been a really like the person who kind of taught me uh, and introduced me Abdullah actually, kind of taught me a real estate. Um, I was trusting and I gave her all my clients uh, because I was doing holiday home and I said, okay, if you close it, you'll just give me anything. And she actually sold millions and millions to them and never gave me anything and I didn't know about it. What? And she was sending me back the client and I had to pay her commission <laughs> on holiday home. So, no and uh, the person was a close friend and uh, I discovered uh, at this moment that we are in a terrible industry and this industry, anybody will do anything for money, which is really sad because you can lose friends, you can have terrible fight with your colleagues and, and that's something bad. And I was always in the mindset where uh, I, I want... Uh, let's make money together. Let's mm. make it together. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm this type of person. And you also, and what is like, you always think that people are like you, but you quite easily discover that not everybody is like you. Yep. Not everybody wants you good for you. Yep. Not, uh, uh, you know, people are strategic with you. And, uh, and uh, the, the fact that I was quite naive with that. Mm -hmm. So at this time, so I said, okay, it was terrible. So you get, uh, you know, like the trust is uh, terrible. So after you, get, you, 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 of course, say, okay, I'm, I'm going to make it anyway. And after you have another trauma where people always saw you as a threat, threat mm -hmm. and threat. In before you get there, try to block the way, don't let you work in certain area and things like that. And it happened to me. So like a few years ago, I, I kind of had a kind of a breakdown where, uh, um, where I was think, really thinking that this type of mindset and industry is so disgusting that I don't want to be there. 
I don't want to be part of these people. I don't want to be strategic. I don't, I don't want to be a monster. I don't want to become this terrible person that I've seen people growing and making money and becoming disgusting people. It make, money makes you more of who you are. Yeah. So, a bit like alcohol. So, so I decided that this helped me a lot to uh, observe, okay, you want me to be a monster? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be like you. I'm not playing that, that game, but I'm going to, for sure, be make sure. I'm going to, for sure, make sure that you are behind me all the time. And at this, at this moment, I am very, very much like this. Good. It's helped me to keep... Uh, I think competition is good. I think uh, even for my level, even if I don't care anymore what other people, I wanted to be liked before. At some point, I... Uh, and today, I don't care to be liked, appreciated. I don't want to correct any narrative anymore. So I don't care. I'm playing the game. You will be... If you try to be on my way, I will make sure you... You 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 we jumped over and uh, certain people I want to keep them behind me, and it's cool to have some targets. It helps, but I will not do something. Um, I'm not. Uh, I believe in karma, so I don't want to be doing bad uh, things or being sneaky. Good. I hate that. I'm a straightforward person. I don't mean harm to anyone, mm -hmm. but I will fight on the fair game. Uh, to make sure you, st you stay behind me and to show it to you. So someone has done something bad to you. You didn't do anything bad back to them. You've harnessed the energy that it created inside of yes. you, the fire in your belly that it created, yes. and you have channeled it and l used it as like a laser focus. <laughs> You've come in hard. <laughs> yes. I didn't know you watched Dragon Ball Z. Yes. You've, you've come in hard, that energy onto your work. Yes. And left them in your dust. Absolutely. Wicked. That's the best, Sick. best, 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 best. And sometimes I pump myself up, you know, yeah. with this. And I'm like, good girl, calm down. Nobody did to you. I'm like, no, I need this the energy, you know, like. Fuck this, it, why uh, not? Like this morning, for example, uh, uh, this morning I, w I woke up and, uh, and I was like, okay, I'm grateful uh, to have uh, this life. I'm grateful to live. Uh, another day and to be healthy, to have my family. So, you know, I wake up someday and, and I have this rage and energy, but it's a good one. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to squash anyone. I don't want to do bad. I just want them to be behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Certain people, not all Why people. Not? I want to see, I, but I also want to see very much people rise. And there was people, some people that I want to, to see them above me and I will be extremely, extremely proud to see, the, to see them up there and I will celebrate them. Some, some people deserve that and I'm looking forward uh, for a lot of my colleagues to rise and to be number one and, and to stay up there and because they really deserve it. Like me? You, like you, like a lot of people in, actually in Driven nice. are amazing person then, and you want to see them there. And you have certain people that you want to see behind. <laughs> Good. Um, a lot of people's ambitions, once they've mastered their art and their craft, like you have, mm. a lot of their ambitions is to go out and start their own business, their yeah. own company. Mm. Will, you, will we one day see Khadija El Otmani Real Estate Khadija LLC? Property. Khadija, Khadija Property. Khadija Properties uh, LLC. Uh, I thought about that a few years ago. And I understood very quickly that it's not something that will work for me. Uh, be Why? Because I, the way I see um, brokerage, I see them as a football clubs. Mm. Okay. So uh, opposite, uh, do I want to go open my football club and start to manage people instead of going and like uh, uh, being the, the number 10 of the team? No, no, I'm not interested by that. And I am kind of the person who need to be, um, uh, who, uh, who must, mostly need to be taken care of. So for me, being part of driven properties and having just 
my only and sole job is to score goals. Okay. So the rest is taken care of by uh, all this put in place by, uh, by the management. So I don't take care of contract. I don't take care of anything. So I basically go um, strike the deal, come bring the document, and they take care of the rest, which is amazing. If I decide to go, so I'm, I mean, I'm the number one, I'm the number, uh, like, uh, number 10 of my own team. So it means that I have to give up that. So I, I have to be uh, the trainer. By the way, I've, number 10 means number one. Yes. In yeah. Football. She means like the Dennis Bergkamp being number 10. <laughs> yes. Was he number 10? I think he was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it means that I have to become a trainer. So I have to manage people, hire, massage the ego of the one year. I'm not ready to do that. I realized, okay, I said like, am I a good manager? I don't think so. Am I a good seller? I think I am. So why would I go and pause uh, this, uh, uh, these things? And I see myself like growing and uh, improving year after year, becoming better, better at what I do. And then I'm saying, you know what? Uh, going to make uh, 30% more because like what I'm achieving is actually um, uh, the, the sales I'm achieving are actually uh, the earning for a small agency, okay. a very small uh, uh, agency. So I, I thought that's not work for me. I prefer go to the office, act like a diva, and uh, <laughs> you know, like comes and been taken care of. I have uh, like in the football club, so they make sure you have your office, they make sure you have their team, you make sure you have the taking care of the people, massage you, etc. By the way. This, this isn't on my question list, but when did you get your own office? That's a pretty cool thing. Uh, because uh, uh, because I, um, I had a, a few companies in driven property that I co-founded with Abdullah. So it was uh, necessary at the time uh, that uh, I have an office space. But do you think uh, you'll give me one? Uh, please do not uh, revoke that uh, privilege. <laughs> You are the best, Abdullah Ajaji. You are amazing, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I know that uh, this is a controversial uh, topic in the office space. In the <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drama, drama. So let's not talk about, uh, too okay. much about that. Right, okay. But we said enough. You've earned millions. What do you do with your earnings when you have it? All in real estate. All in real estate. So you own property? Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in, uh, uh, with my husband, we own properties in Europe, um, in Dubai, uh, and then invest uh, also a lot. So, in real estate in okay. Dubai. How many properties do you own? But uh, uh, at the moment, uh, we only have one because we buy, sell, buy, sell. So ah. we don't do y uh, yield. But. Uh, now I'm looking at some um, some uh, of plan to invest in part of, but I always go all in uh, in real estate because I believe that we need to take advantage of this market that probably uh, gonna uh, the earnings and the performances can, might reduce a little bit. So, Khadija, today is the. Oh my God! I don't even know what day it is. I think it's the um, fifth or the sixth. Today is the 6th of March, mm -hmm. 2024. Where's the best place to invest in Dubai? Uh, there is certain area. It depends. So if you want, yes, it, it, it depends. If you want to do some off-plan uh, investment and you have an off-plan strategy, I will at the moment go um, around the canal or any property uh, by, uh, by the beach. Why is, the canal? The canal, because we are like really close to, uh, to Jumeirah and it's very close. It's, it's the center of the city, really. And you buy, uh, um, you have a very nice, in, you are in the city, but very close to the beach. You are like 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes by the beach. And from the top, top location, um, uh, of a top, uh, you know, uh, how we say that in English? Uh, Burj Khalifa, Burj Al Arab, airport. I was like top. So landmarks. It? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you are very close to the top landmarks, so it's something can be a, an investment for real for um, uh, for yield, 
uh, residential area where you can live and work because you're close to the uh, business area. So no, no, it's it's quite good uh, to be in that uh, places. City Works was a big and still a big, big top uh, location. Uh, people like to live there. It's a low-rise building. People tend to go more uh, for uh, low-rise buildings um, opposite to like skyscrapers, like the living. We, I think we we are uh, past this era where people want to live like uh, at the uh, 40 or 60 uh, floor. Um, a lot of people are saying right now that Dubai is a bubble. True or false? It's uh, false because in the uh, UBS um, index, we are like quite low uh, on the ranking. Index? Index. UBS. Uh, oh, the U UBS, sorry. Uh, it's your French accent. I did not sorry, understand what sorry, you nobody said. Nobody understands me. Why we should British, have subtitles. Why British cannot understand my accent? Je ne sais pas. Like everybody complain about my accent. I'm not complaining. Yeah, you complain like oh, uh, what like your <laughs> face. Sometimes when I speak, you're like oh, uh, who best this? <laughs> it's funny. I like teasing you. Um, Is the buy bubble? No, um, and you know, I've been I've been in this industry since ten years now, and really. Like, oh, it's a bubble, oh, it's going to collapse, oh, it's going to this, it's going to that. So uh, I've kind of learned to just, you know, accept that this rep reputation is probably there, will be there for another decade. And we're like, are we in a bubble? Are we, are we in this? Are we in that? And I'm not uh, a fortune teller. So, yeah. Uh, and when you look at all the predictions that they do for finance, etc., they're always wrong. They're always wrong. So I'm like, I'm like you, mate. I don't know what's uh, going to happen, but I can have a, like a short uh, view. Uh, but in the long run, it's going to be difficult okay. to, to say. Can I make a statement? And then you can critique me. I'll give you full okay. permission to critique me in front of the cameras, okay. in front of the listeners. Mm. Uh, from my right. perspective, <laughs> from my perspective, and I did come here when I was a child, mm -hmm. but obviously as a on a holiday, not for business. Um, I've obviously seen it get busier and busier and busier. Um, from my perspective, again, being a Brit from London, um, and from what I've heard, and I have always flirted with the idea of moving here for a long, long time. From what I heard, people weren't really living, or clients of ours, the old Tri Network community, weren't really basing themselves out of Dubai properly like they are now. Since COVID, during COVID, what happened was you guys had, I think it was like a 12 week lockdown. Is that right? How long was uh, it? Less. Than less. That, yes. Okay. You had a really less. short lockdown compared to the other countries around mm. the world, like America, La uh, the UK and so on, France, Italy, China. And you opened up your doors and you said, okay, you guys want to be in lockdown. We're going to open up our doors to everybody. You can come to Dubai, but you've got to wear a mask and do this, this mm. and this. So they opened the floodgates and people flooded in yeah. naturally to Dubai, mainly the ultra high net worth individual because you had to pay for a hotel, a flight, maybe a private jet to get yourself here and actually, uh, you know, not be on furlough and so on and yeah. so forth. And then what happened was they said, you know what? I could live here. Or they said, like the ultra high net worths do, yeah. let's go see some real estate. Yeah. And then they said or realized this on a pound per square foot basis is cheap compared to London, yes. Manhattan, Geneva, LA, yeah, we still have, Miami. We've way below that, yeah. Yeah, mm. uh, Zurich, whatever. Yeah. On a pound per square foot basis or a dirham per square foot basis, you get so much more value for money in Dubai and it's tax free and I can wear my watch without my arm getting cut off mm. by some thugs in central London. Um, and the schools are good and the weather is good. Okay. Apart from a few months of the year, mm. but that's the summer holidays and we can go to Europe yeah. anyway. And then they started buying, re buying real estate in Dubai and basing themselves out of Dubai. That's the difference between pre 2020 and post 2023, 2024. That's what I've seen. 
And so people say it's a bubble. I think the prices have come up to their true value. Um, I don't think... So that's... Sorry, I interrupted you. There might be a slight correction. Yeah. Because they've done this. There might be a slight correction because it's gone crazy. And I know there was the war in Russia with Ukraine and that there was an influx of Russian and Ukrainian people. A lot of my clients moved here. Mm -hmm. um, however... I, I think I, I can't see how it will come back down. Everyone that bought need, would need to sell for it to go back to its original value. We, as a broker in this market, we are the best uh, to feel the pulse uh, of, uh, of that. At the moment, you see how busy we are at, uh, uh, at work and the exodus, the non-stop exodus since uh, COVID uh, of all this population, especially the rich. Like, you know, my first indication of uh, that ultra-rich have um, now flooded uh, the UAE is when back then, we, you will see only one or two super yachts a few years ago. Today, the amount, the amount of a super yacht and even one uh, mega yacht uh, here in uh, Dubai, at the shore of Dubai, is, is incredible. So you say, OK, I talked with, uh, I was in Paris, and I, uh, I've been approached by a, uh, a charter uh, company, yacht chartering uh, company. Mm -hmm. And they say, we, we are uh, now, uh, we, are, we, 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 get, we are best in south of France. Uh, but we have we are an open, opening an office in uh, uh, in uh, Dubai. I'm like, uh, why? It's like because uh, a lot of our clients who own super yachts are now sending their boats to Dubai for a few months. So they will use it to go uh, to uh, Seychelles, Mauritius. Uh, from Europe? They send their boat from Europe? Yes, yes. Wow. Which... Uh, which is like uh, not done. It wasn't. It's so we, we see one or two, <laughs> and we were like, honestly, like I don't know, many years ago when we see a super yacht in Dubai, there was one also who was stuck in Dubai because of uh, some um, by a court. Uh, someone was like, uh, oh, like um, a sanction. Yes. Uh, okay. No, no, not sanction. No? That was nothing to do with the war, but he, I think it's like a divorce. Oh. So he was trying to hide it in Dubai and uh, the wife found it and, you know, got stuck in you Dubai. You know that there's a boat in Antibes, a big yacht. Yeah. Uh, the name of the boat is She Got the House. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the, the, the part, uh, that was the same concept. And uh, so this client, so the the the. I remember it was like when we see a, bo uh, a boat like that, we were like in Disneyland. You're like, wow. You know, like, yeah. it's crazy. And uh, today... It was in the papers, wasn't it? Like the College Times, what's it called? Yes. Yeah, yes. Be uh, I've been uh, seen uh, or uh, it's at the shore in Dubai. And now there is many of those that ha they have to build marinas to uh, welcome uh, this type of uh, boat. We've got so, a few now, like Marina. Yeah, yes, um, of course. Bulgari, yeah, yeah. Uh, around the palm, mm. and business pay. Yeah. So that's one for this type of population. Number two, we still have families who are moving with like entry, uh, I don't know, entry level budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, you know, different profile of still coming for different reasons. They want that lifestyle. They want the support system, families. They want to have, be able to can afford uh, to have a nanny to help them to have a normal normal life and to live a little bit the life. The, I always say the other side of the coin. Um, yeah, the other side of the coin is. Yeah. yeah. So is that, uh, for example, opposite, uh, opposite, uh, opposed to the timing we work in France, where France is 35 hours per week. In Dubai, is uh, the legal, um, as per uh, the labor uh, minister, uh, minister, is uh, 48 hours a week. So I was talking with some of my friends. They say, okay, we work longer, but even if we have two, we two day weekends, we can enjoy it. We're not like cleaning the house. We're not, 
we're not having to do all that. We, uh, and as they also tell me we avoid, avoid fight. So this quality of last uh, fight with, like, you know, in the home, like for the, uh, the grocery or uh, for the cleaning or for the cooking, etc. Yeah, so remove that. It's a quality of lifestyle f for the family. Uh, you can be in a good uh, school. It's very, but it's very expensive, right? The school are like crazy expensive. So when your family, it's quite... Not so really it, compared to the UK private schools. Yeah, yeah, but uh, in France, uh, France, uh, France, the school is free, but... Yeah, same in yeah, but, UK uh, state. U yeah, but uh, UK, yeah, yeah but uh, like not everybody um, go to private school here. Most of... So I did, I got kicked out. Why? I got kicked out of two schools, my no. Greek school and my English school. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I know. So uh, the lifestyle is quite, it's very expensive, it's quite expensive for families, but you want to have this, life, the, this type of uh, the lifestyle with an environment. So it's not only for tax, not also safety, but this is why people are flocking the, the UAE, especially Dubai. And we are a good signal for that because if people still call us to ask, I'm moving my family to the UAE, I want to find a house, I want to rent a house, I want to buy a house, I want to buy and then uh, buy my house and then invest. And if we keep, if the UAE keep managing the way they're managing, which is a business uh, hub and business, uh, uh, the UAE is a, on itself like a business uh, or a, like a company. We Which will be fine, and I don't see uh, the end of it, really. Um, I, I see that certain areas stabilize in terms of prices. Certain areas, and real estate have a cycle, right? Certain, certain neighborhoods are at the end of their cycle, and certain areas are just like mer emerging. So I think we have a few very good years uh, ahead of us. Don't forget that, unfortunately, unfortunately, we are, uh, I believe that we are like the new Switzerland, you know. Uh, anything happening around the world, the first thing that uh, people do is like jumping in a jet with their family. I forget, no, that's only the rich. So they come here and they are just re relocate. So we, through the history, we used to see that type of uh, um, pattern, but it was going to Switzerland until Europe said no more of of, uh, of this. <laughs> yeah, and so we should enjoy, and everybody should uh, take advantage of uh, this kind of exciting uh, time that we are living here, and make the most of it. Because at some point, uh, is there the FMI? FMI? Or how is like uh, FMI? French people will understand the What's FMI. FMI. <coughs> yes, sorry, I googled it. Uh, in English, uh, is the World Monetary... Oh, the oh. IMF? Yes. The International Monetary Fund? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Until uh, the IMF come back and say, put again some rules. Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. Yeah. Christine, don't come to the UAE, please, yeah. because last time you came, we had uh, VAT. <laughs> Thank well, you, Christine. Yeah, yes. It was her? It no. was heard. It's also a job to lobby for uh, implementing taxes, etc. So uh, that was uh, the implementation of uh, that. Yeah. And oh my thing. God. Okay. Look, I, by the way, I want to just say I'm happy to pay taxes as long as I actually get something in return uh, for it from the yeah, country. Yes. In the UK, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that before, but I felt it. No, no. You late, should not. Uh, you should re not. More recent. You should not say that because. Uh, in UK, you just don't feel it, etc. But we are not in the same pattern here. So what do you mean? You say, yeah, here uh, I'm happy to pay tax, but in UK, I don't. I feel, uh, I feel like I. Uh, how we say? Well, I can't walk around with my watch in the streets. Yeah. Um, if I want a doctor's appointment, because we have the national health service, so it's meant to be free healthcare. Yeah. You can't get an appointment for weeks. Uh, and then the treatment you do get isn't the best. Mm. Um, <laughs> you pay minimum 68% tax if you earn six figures, yeah. more than half. Yeah. How do you justify that? Okay, uh, the, I cannot justify this, and, as, and I, I do believe it's 
the, the taxes are, are a burden uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, citizens yeah. in, uh, in Europe. But let's not forget uh, that... Uh, y y so you mean insecurity? Um, okay. We are uh, in that... In, uh, we are extremely lucky to be a British national, French la national. Because living in that part of the world, I understood very clearly that my, my parents migrate to France. Mm -hmm. And I'm extremely grateful. I'm very proud to be uh, originally Moroccan. There's no discussion about that. But I'm, the fact that I can move freely, the fact that I can go back home whenever I want, the fact that I, um, I let's imagine I lose everything. I can't go back. Ho I can go back to France, and France will be there for me. Yeah. So I, I, I will be able to go to the doctor. Okay, I will not have the best looking hospital. And so it will be terrible. I'm gonna queue. We are extremely, extremely privileged, and I only realize that now after 16 years living in Dubai, I have friends. Or oh, like what's say, okay, let's, uh, you know what? We have a long, week, a long weekend next week. Let's go there. No, I don't have a visa. I apply the visa. And everything is so difficult. Everything is very, very difficult. So I do agree that uh, tax in Europe needs to go, to go down. But I still believe that's one of the best places on earth uh, for... Um, for us to grow up and to to live okay at right at, uh, at the time the it's not the safest but it's not that terrible either so fair enough you speak like a privileged white british citizen olive yeah olive but uh, you um, you just are, you just live there so in a few years you're gonna be like oh my god thank god thank god Take my money, 50%. May, maybe so, maybe so. If it gets better, because like I said, I didn't have that problem before. It's I never complained about tax before, but the last two years uh, has been difficult. And the, my problem is they don't, they fluff around it. They don't yeah. tell you the truth. Yes, yes. You know, like you're paying income tax, then you're paying VAT at 20%. Mm. So you're paying tax again on already yes. taxed income. It just like, and I am feeling like I'm not getting that... Money's worth. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, people are getting uh, richer, richer, uh, richer and richer. And the, on the other uh, side, uh, people, the poverty are uh, striking Europe like it never did before. And it's becoming extremely difficult. Yeah, correct. So uh, I, I, I do believe that they need some time to rebalance and re, you know, uh, uh, fix that. And unfortunately, that's certain gap. It's not the super rich. Or, or because all these people have figured out how to not pay yeah. taxes uh, 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 and that's the people in between who will be the, the, the hit by the, the most of taxes. But you, you're safe now. You are here. <laughs> Thank you. In a no uh, income tax haven. Thank you. Well, Alex, welcome in the income tax haven. Don't use that as a... <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Be, uh, I, I, I was very judgmental with Europe and I'm less and less. I do believe that the Middle East and Asia is the future because I don't believe the, the free uh, world as Europe are the, the, and the human rights and free uh, speech, etc. are the, like, uh, democracy is not anymore the norm, you know, like, mm -hmm. so that we need to kind of uh, civilization to be do uh, reset a little bit uh, all that a good whole dictator <laughs> by me <laughs> no I'm joking I'm just saying we'll leave that in yeah yeah no you don't <laughs> leave it <laughs> no no I, I, I think there is there should be some um, like uh, for example in France the um, it, it's bit we it's very sad to, to see that the way are, uh, of the, the, the things uh, uh, are going. And I believe that really we need a big setup, uh, but not a war, obviously. I'm a humanist and peace uh, activist. I want peace everywhere. But uh, something is not working. On, and our, our democracies, mm -hmm. they've been criticizing 
other country, but actually what they are becoming now are not the best uh, uh, either. So I just remembered one more thing just to add to what I said before. It's mm -hmm. not always about getting back. Take, take, take. It's also when I give them the taxes, I give them my money that I've worked very hard to earn. It's what they do with the money when they have it. For instance, giving it to other countries. But let's not get into that. No, uh, th th this is very much what they want you to see right now. Uh, so I don't, be I don't believe it's that black or white, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I don't believe it's going to last this way forever. It can't. It's not Because sustainable. there will be a civil war somewhere. Oh, yeah. It's already like kind of... Yes. There's already like some sort of uprising. I think even Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like the reason... Yeah, 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 it's part of the uprise because mm. it's decentralized. But this is a completely different story. Did you did you uh, did you ever experiment uh, someone who purchased property with bitcoins? No, I have some. I remember you saying. I it. say hi to my bitcoin client who purchased real estate with bitcoins. I love you guys, and I see your uh, bunnies. You're gonna be rich again. <laughs> How many properties have you sold with, uh, via bitcoin? Uh, a few. I don't want to say the, the number. Also. Okay. Why? Is there something wrong? No, it's nothing wrong, but... And, uh, and we did it at the time where it was not completely... Uh, so we had to go Careful. around a lot. Huh? Careful <laughs> with your words. I'm not going to... I, I did my, all my KYC and my compliance, and, I'm, and they're all clean. Whew. Okay, good. Okay, I, I remember the questions actually off the top of my head. Um, if I had... 100 to 500,000 euros or sterling. No, no, you have to redo that. I don't work in that budget. Oh, I'm sorry. Say uh, 300, 350, uh, to 300 to 500. You got 100,000, uh, I guess it's a rental. Don't, you cannot keep this, fuck, 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 fuck. You cannot keep this. <laughs> that, you cannot use it. Fuck. Okay, I'll start again. If, I'm, I'm going to use these figures so that the average Joe or um, even for me uh, would know what to do with their money. I'm not going to say millions. So if I had 100,000 to 500,000 euros or pounds to invest in Dubai with or without a mortgage, what would your advice be as an investment agent to invest in? Um, in secondary market, I would advise you to get, uh, to, uh, to, to get a property in... Uh In one, uh, to purchase a one or two bedroom, uh, one bedroom more, mostly at this price. What do, one bedroom is there in Martin, Marina, Port de la Mer, City Walk, etc. Oh, you're, you 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 like Marina as an investment? Uh, uh, alors, the, it's not that easy. Uh, I don't like Marina, but after it's a matter of test. So it's my personal test. Although when I moved to Dubai, the first thing I ran to Marina, I loved it. But we've been aging now. Mm. I'm a more, I, I want quite... Now that you're nice. old. Yeah, I'm very old. Yeah. Look at my third age. <laughs> um, so I will go for City Walk, Port de la Mer, uh, something in Marina. So today uh, in, this ma uh, in Dubai, the data is uh, public. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, if you analyze the data, you can do a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So if you sit and analyze the transactions in certain area, It's easy. It's quite easy uh, to buy something well and to sell it immediately and flip it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered the microphone thing, so I was moving. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. So Sorry. I like been doing this. Yes, and before we so started to measure how far away the microphone was from my mouth, because so he said to keep it a fist away. Sorry, Deshaun. So he's been um, fisting his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I haven't been doing anything of, of the okay. sort. So I was giving... Uh, so Marina, Port de la Mer. No, no, Marina, Port so de la Mer. In it, look, pick a, a top area yeah. and analyze the data. You will make a lot of money. Trust me. So, um, and you go and buy, you look at the transaction, how, uh, how much been sold this property, and you just go buy one at the... Uh, at the lowest price and immediately put it back in the market. Immediately? Immediately. And wow. you can make a lot of money. Maybe we'll do this. 
Okay. I have questions, but not for the podcast after. Um, I'm an agent who's just moved here from the UK. Mm. Real case scenario. What's your advice to someone like me? I'll advise, uh, so uh, what I've heard is that you're an, also a top broker in the UK and you have an amazing database of clients. I've seen some of the clients. They have, they have that thing that I was looking when I started. <laughs> so um, I will spend a lot of time uh, uh, kind of informing all my database of clients that you are now in the Dubai market working for a big re- brokerage and... I will choose either I will be doing, um, I will be um, the broker who do uh, many, uh, do uh, and service end users and investors, or I will give all my energy to one business model. So with your profile, uh, I will advise you to go on the investment side and to exclusively focus on that and to uh, work hard to get the best opportunity for your client and you can just serve that on a silver plate to your client and make them shitload of money. So, um, it, and it's amazing because I believe the, there is still some great opportunities in the market and the the, the gap and the the fat we can still earn is slowly reducing, 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 and one day we're going to reach the same percentage as Europe. Mm. So uh, we need to make sure that we make the most of it until... Um, make lemon nade yeah. while there's lemons. Yeah. Okay. So that's my advice. Okay. So Become it, an investment agent. Yes, and if you focus on that, uh, on, on that business model... It means is gonna, you're going to spend your time analyzing the data, transactions, talk about area specialists, like try to, you know, like identify the what type of properties are the ones who, who will be liquid. So it means that you'll purchase it at the best price or even at the market price and immediately put it back in the market. But we flip it immediately. Without even doing uh, renovation. And there is a ton of that. And this is what is exciting because you can be, um, you can be, a, you can purchase property and only uh, do, um, only do uh, uh, purchase, renovate, and sell, and resell. Or you can just uh, cash in and cash out. So you buy, you sell, you buy, you sell, and in a very... I might ask you for some guidance. Um, I I, I thought I spent a lot of time explaining this. Well, more. It's not enough. Okay. Um, Okay, let's let's talk about the other scenario as well, because um, I have some colleagues and friends who know I'm doing this podcast with you, and they've asked for the... uh, podcast link after so they can listen to it mm. and they haven't got any experience or weren't top agents in um in the uk yeah uh so what if they're a new agent to dubai what's the first thing they should do day one they sit down what so should they do after choosing Go. Uh, the right brokerage for them yeah they're right. at driven for after, instance um, choosing the right brokerage for them uh they want so uh, uh, like really observe your colleagues Mm-hmm. Ask them questions. And the best, the best way is like learning from others. So a- again, I'm going to go back to the football club, but uh, you play, uh, you, you, you've heard interview of football player. They always say the same thing. I played with this player and he was doing this amazing thing and I went up to him. It's the same. You have to learn from others and it's incredible. So jo- join the best brokerage for you you know, where you will, you will feel comfortable. From that brokerage, you know that there is some players there who can help you to grow. Mm-hmm. Ask questions, be collaborative, learn, pick your battle, who you want to be, make your plan, uh, uh, write your plan, how much you want to earn, how, want, how much you want your um, uh, client to to. To, to earn because this is how I, I was starting. I said, okay, 
if my client is making that type of money, then so my, my top priority is like more my client earn, more I would be earning. Mm -hmm. And opposite to more you sell, more I earn. Mm -hmm. More I sell, more I earn. So my philosophy is really I'm trying so hard. And it's, it's payback because I am the, the, I'm trying so hard to sell, uh, to, uh, sorry, to grow the wealth of my clients because more they're making, more I will be earning. So that's the result is that I actually, I, I believe, I think I, I sold the less property, but I, I earned the most. <laughs> so I, probably last year I did, a, I did a, some like less than 10 transaction, I think. I, I sold for what, 300 million? So I don't know. Yes, so I'm paid in average twelve percent per transaction. Three hundred million you sold last year, I think, or less even. That's but, less but than they my target. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah, but they calculate my uh, earning. My average earning is twelve percent per deal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, nuts. But do you know why? Because my client make. One of my clients made eight times his initial investment. Actually, eight eight point eight uh, point five. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I know what these guys are thinking now, and I'm gonna say it for them. That's the market. That's, That's the not the market. oh yes oh yes oh the. You're lucky. So I'm lucky. So I've been looking for te ten years. So this is skills. This is not luck. Luck is like maybe 10% of that. Even the luck is to be at the right time, uh, at the right moment with the right uh, person. This is not uh, luck because you can go and ask other people. Even, I, I'm, I don't think I will be able to uh, reproduce the eight time uh, initial uh, uh, um, ROE. But what I can be sure that I can make you two or three times. It's basic skills. And today we have the tools, any tools to, uh, to, to make that money. And it's even better than investment banking because this is material things that you can see uh, your investment is, is somewhere, you know? And mm -hmm. I, don't, I do not de depend on, uh, on easy other uh, crazy market. So it's not luck, it's uh, because to get that, to get that product, I worked analyzing the data, looking for this, proper, this, uh, uh, this investment, and there is a full strategy put in place. And someone, a client asked me, I think your client asked me, have you lost up now? I still didn't, and I hope I will never. Why I didn't lose? Because I refused to sell certain properties. So I gave up on money, and I gave up on full floors um, and making uh, two million uh, dirham on a deal because I didn't want it to be part. And I knew that if this client will purchase that full floor in that building, it wouldn't do well. It will. It will immediately when they end over, it will lose twenty percent of the. This, and he did. And he did. Did you tell him not to buy? I said I'm not gonna buy. I can uh, instead buy this. He said no, no, no. It's fine. I'm going to go and buy it. I, I just wanted you uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, um, to help me um, and to take care of this investment. I said, I'm sorry. I don't want to be part of that because I know once I will accept this money of this, that you choose this, I will, as soon as I will accept this money, I will be chained to this bad investment. And he, the, 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 the client will own me because then I will have to fight to uh, uh, make that money back that he will lose as soon as the end of it. And that happened. Mashallah. So, you know what happened I, I, with this client? He got the, one year later, he showed up, he sent me a message. He sent me a, he sent me a message and he showed up to, to he said, I, I need to meet you. I said, okay, I'm still at the same office. Uh, he came with flour and chocolate and I was like, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. He's like, no, no, I, I, want, I just wanted to, tell you thank you 
uh, and uh, I should have trusted your opinion, and you were right. Wow. So, uh, Are you sure he was a man? Huh? Are you sure he was a man? Yeah, he was he a must man. have been transgender because a man would never say that. No, because after he wanted me to invest yeah, his money. Usually we're too proud or to have, have too much ego no, because to come with flowers because and chocolates. He came with uh, his, uh, the guy who introduced him, to introduce him the previous uh, investment, the, the floor that I, the, the full floor I didn't want him to invest. And I suggest him other property at the time. And yeah, so it was a big, fat, a big fight. It was a, like we were three of us. So it's, imagine a two broker, the, the other broker is defending his opinion and his, and the, his strategy and the investment. And me, I'm saying, I did, so I try, I tend to don't be disrespectful if you are respectful if the other broker. I didn't want it to completely um, say is typically that you're going to lose your fucking 30% of this amount of money and it's going to be very difficult to make it back. Because otherwise I'm going to look like a jealous, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what, so the guy wasn't a broker, actually. He was his, his banker, but he was making money uh, to introduce him to that. So he was happy, actually. I said I'm not, because I was, otherwise I would have replaced him in, uh, in that. So when he came back, he said, sorry, and I sold him a 53 million uh, apartment, uh, which is w worth today. Uh, 80 million dirham. Yeah. Amazing. I know you're going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, 90% of my clients follow me in social media. So uh, I'm fully transparent. I'm not ashamed. Perfect. I'm one now I know where to find all your clients. Okay, you can. And try to... I'm going to DM all of your followers. Do, do, do it. Do they it. Are, they are super loyal as I'm loyal to, to we'll see them. about that ah, you see, see, see. <laughs> go ahead go ahead please do I'll give you names listen just la last question um, you have your own team I don't have a team okay I so what colleagues. does Lea and Remy do they are my partners okay and Janelle oh Yes, but uh, she uh, she's helping me to handle. You have a PA. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, you I have three. Uh, three. Yeah, mm -hmm, <laughs> I know. Yes, hello. So watch how you speak to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Okay. You have, but you do have your own team. Okay, they're partners. You call them partners, but you have a team. You're a team together. You work together. Yeah, we work together. Okay. We are partners. You have a team. Mm. And you work out of the same office. Now, it's not my team. We are a team. Okay, fine. No, but the, okay. The, it's very important. Who's in charge of bringing a new person onto the team? New person? Yeah. Client, you mean? No, a new person into the team to work on the team. That's not a team. I choose. Who, you choose. Who gets okay. in my circle? You're the dictator. Okay. So my question oh, to much. you is, what qualities do you look for in a person and skills to join your team, hypothetically speaking, if you were to look for a new team member? Okay, I don't work with broker who is unethical, who is not transparent with their client, buyers, etc. Damn it. Okay, because I was looking at joining. No, no, <laughs> it, it, it really, it's something because I, I am, I, I, I refuse to do certain sales because I, if I don't believe in that, I, I lost also yeah, clear. opportunities. So I request that people who work, I cannot work with crooks. So if, uh, so that's most number one thing ethical and not ethical with me necessarily, but if you, I need to see you to be ethical with your clients. So you're not ethical with your client, you're not part of my team, you're disgusting, you go away. <laughs> yeah. So that's number one. Uh, you need to be a hard worker. Uh, I, Impose uh, is that uh, English? Impose. Yeah, impose. I impose my uh, myself uh, a, a, a certain uh, guidelines in terms of like working to the office, coming to the office, talking, um, doing being conversational with some people. Sometimes you're not interested, you're tired. I do it. So you have to have the same level as me as work ethic, as a, a work value, and then we are in the same line. Okay, there is nothing more that I hate when I show up at 8.30 at the office, or I'm the first one at the office, 
and my partner are not there. So usually in France, I use something, uh, a saying very uh, vulgar, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, I say it in no, French. Uh, I say it in French, but don't translate it because in English no. it's terrible. Just say, excuse my French. I'll excuse say. my French. I always say to my colleagues, my colleague, uh, excusez-moi pour le, la vulgarité, mais c'est vraiment ça. Excuse uh, me for the vulgarity. Yes. Je tapine pas pour toi. Je ne tapine pas pour toi. And because I work hard and we make, the, 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 it's a lot of money. Like really, it's certain deals are, so I'm not here to work for you. Yeah. So I want you to struggle with me. Mm. You know, I want you to be down. So, like when we are down, we're down together. Okay, of course, one of us needs to uplift the other one. Yeah. But I cannot be always uh, in, the, in the arena and you wake up uh, at 10 o'clock and show up at 11. That's not what I... Uh, My mentor in, in London is like that as well. It makes sense. So I had a, a lot of, uh, not fights, but for example, I used to tell Leah, we uh, just... Leah is 25 years old and she's exceptional for your uh, Yeah, she age. is. I'm impressed. So, and discipline is something that I, because she's very much disciplined, but she's a young girl, pretty, super smart. And she's like, you know, like, oh, I went out last night or, uh, you know, I'm like, no, be in the arena when I'm there. I'm not like going to start to brainstorm our stuff and I'm like, I'm going to wait because my colleague, my partner is out partying, so she woke up at this time. No, I want to be with, you want to make the, main, the same of me, you want to make more money than me, you fucking be here with me and be for me. So sometimes she like it, she, uh, when she uh, show up to the office before me, she called me and she tell me in French, she's tapping pas pour toi, what you? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that means. ethical, uh, value, work value, And that's it. And you need to be a fighter and good mood, good vibe. I don't like haters. I don't like, I like gossip, but small gossip, like fun gossip. I don't yeah. like drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like yeah, drama, yeah. but my, not my drama. Yeah. Other people drama. But, um, you know, like I like this vibe uh, where uh, we, we work and we have fun. So you need to have like kind of a good vibe. Are you good vibe? I don't know. I don't think so. But we part of it. We, we make a team right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we, a group we, chat yeah. now. For anyone listening and watching, Khadija and I are working together on a few bits. Yes, we are. She's involving us. me. She's been yes. amazing. She, um, I, it, it hadn't made me money yet. So I'm no. Waiting. You haven't made me any money yet. Huh? You haven't made me any money yet. I think you should give me some. No, no. Why? Uh, I didn't make you money yet. It's just the beginning, but you're going to earn a lot because of me. Voila. Yes. I hope so, Money, money, money. See, touch wood. Please, <laughs> yeah. God. Okay, Khadija, you've been amazing. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much for coming on the podcast. Please don't think I'm obnoxious. I'm just... What are you talking about? No, I'm scared to look... Don't ruin uh, it. Don't be, why do you care what other people think? No, I don't care. Fuck you all. <laughs> That's it. That's the no. attitude. Who cares? Love. The, the main thing is that you're a good person. You know you're doing good. No, inside no, in your heart uh, yeah yeah i'm trampling and I, i don't have you know that's it i don't Halas. have any skeleton in any drawer so, it's like, so um, thank you very much for having me alex thanks for coming on like i've learned a lot just from being on this podcast in addition to i hope learning from you in the office I hope. and i'm very grateful for your time you, you are uh fierce in your ambition in a good way yeah. you are very hard working you're extremely smart <laughs> and the list goes on no I'm going to stop I'm going to stop yeah I'm going to stop now um, thank, you, thank you thanks for coming on thank you uh, thank you so much Alex thank you I'm, I'm honoured to be I'm honoured to be here and I'll be back anytime to discuss actually it's super fun to have a podcast yeah it is you thinking what I'm thinking yes let's have a, our podcast we discuss our uh, deals and colleagues and gossip and, and drama no no not gossip and drama I, I mean you know what I used joking because you said you didn't like that yeah I, I, I used to be uh, but today I'm not interested in it anymore a uh, little bit like tiny bit some fun stuff you know I'm going to save you and let's just cut the podcast there thanks very much for <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank Alex. you very much for listening thank you okay bye bye that'll be it